We're, we're going to talk about if you were building a franchise today, who yeah. would you want to build around? You're going to pick a forward as well as a defenseman, so we avoid the these are number 97. Yes, these are, these are the stipulations. Okay. Uh, you start your forward. Who are we going with? Well, I rarely get to take the low-hanging fruit. I'm happy to pluck the low-hanging fruit in this one. And, yes, I'll take number 97. And uh, I recognize that he's been in the league for seven years. He's just 25 years of age. So I'd still build my franchise around Connor McDavid. From the moment this young man has stepped foot on NHL ice, everybody rocked back, who does what I do rocked back in their chairs and said, the following. I've never seen anybody like this. And what they mean by that is at least two things. It's the foot speed. He moves at a rapid clip unlike anybody else in the business right now. And the computer on the top of those shoulders is processing the game at just a completely another level. And the entire body kind of buys into those two elements working kind of hand in hand. It really has been amazing. Jamo, for the seven years he's been in the mix, he has been north of 100 points five times. In 2021, 20, he was, sorry, the year before that, 20, so 1920, we were 64 games because we shut it down early for COVID. Mm -hmm. He still finished with 97 points, yeah. fittingly, poetically. And in the shortened season next year, he had, what, 105 points in 56 games or something yeah. stupid like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, it's really indescribable. And remember, Billy, this is in a context of, hey, it's really rare that people get to 100 points in this game because we're more defensively sound than we were back in the 80s and the early 90s. But it's routine yeah. for this young guy. It, it really right. has been fascinating. You don't say this about a lot of players. He generates offense all by himself. He, he plays with great players, but he doesn't need to. All right. <laughs> because you took the low-hanging fruit, we decided now you have to build your franchise around one defenseman. Who would that D-man be? Kale McCarr, and maybe this is pretty straightforward also, but uh, he, he's another guy. And, and I think the defense position might be a steeper challenge. There are just two of you back there. You're forced to make decisions on the opposition bearing down at you, and the whole pace of the NHL can be uh, pretty hard to process for a uh, first-year guy stepping in. He stepped in at the most difficult time of year, Kale McCarr did. Steps out of college, steps into the Stanley Cup, the NHL playoffs, and we're all going, yep, this guy's going to make the transition without much difficulty at all. He plays it smart. He's up in the attack a lot. He's a really solid defender, net-net, but he is just an absolute handful in the offensive zone. And you talk about players that have had, uh, you know, a stronger impact on their respective clubs you'd have to go far and wide search far and wide to find somebody that's made a bigger impact on this abs team than young kale mccarr all right so i'd build an organization around that guy low hanging fruit next level medium hanging fruit i like it <laughs> medium yeah. billy that's still pretty tall though no, so it's, yeah you know, it's no, six, no, your tree is a lot six, a lot taller than most it people's could be fruit low. trees <laughs> uh, who's your forward and it's not number 97 is it's it? it's not and i'm gonna go with alexander barkoff down in florida because because I, I watch him a lot, comes in, the opposition, and when McDavid comes to town, when Matthews comes to town, who's going up against it? It's against Barkov, and Barkov wins that battle a lot of times, and he's a shutdown defenseman. He plays a 200-foot game. He is so responsible at the defensive side of the puck. He never sacrifices offense for defense. He plays on the penalty kill, the power plays, the captain. He's got a ton of leadership, and the numbers this year, the 76 points. He's the reigning Selkie Trophy winner. And when you watch him play, he's always, even if it's a 5 nothing game and they're losing, he is on the back check. He is giving it all. His consistency from the start of the season to the end of the season just never, never wavers. He is always there. He's forefront for the Panthers. And if I want that guy, and he's big, 6'4", 226 pounds, and he's got that long reach, lanky. So if I'm going down and I want to build my franchise right down the middle with one of the strongest, best way to center, two-way centerman in the NHL, it has to be Alexander Barkov. He, he does it all, and he's becoming even better yeah. than he was. Every single year, he seems to improve, and this year, I believe he's going to be the Selkie Trophy winner again. We shall see. Make a coach's eyes light up. Oh, that's a, goodness, that's a right? playoff package. That yeah. is a frame built for the postseason. All right, defenseman. Can't say Ekblad. This is not a Panthers pregame no. show. <laughs> so who do you got well, on got D? Barkov, okay. So, <laughs> Kale McCars, that's 
that's a choice. Yeah. yeah, out there, it's tough to go away from that one. Okay. So that's a. But I'm gonna go Mo Sider in Detroit. Okay. So you're looking. Right. I'm gonna go Moritz Sider and what he's meant. 45 points this year. And he, I talked about the 197 pounds. That's what he's listed at. He's only gonna get bigger. Once he rounds out, he's gonna be 210, 215 pounds. He is gonna be a force. He's still on the rocking blue. wise. Under and, 200 and pounds. He's, he's still, still rocking guys. Those he, reverse hits he's he got, pulls. Oh, he's oh, got over 100 people. hits on the season. Over 100 block shots. And if I wanted it in Detroit, you're looking there and you're trying to build your franchise around a player. Well, Mo Sider on defense, you're locked up. You're talking about a Nick Lidstrom type defenseman yeah. in Detroit with for, an edge. for years to come. That Lidstrom plays with an edge. edge and he's got some meanness to his game, the offensive side, and he is very stout defensively and the backward skating ability to talk, shut down the top defenders. Moritz Sider is as good as it gets at a young age and you should see that continual improvement from him so if i'm starting out a franchise i, I want the best rookie yeah. defenseman in the nhl there's been some you... comparisons to chris pronger in yeah most siders game do you do you agree with oh that? I, I see elements he's a little of, bit of nastiness i, I mean, see the elements of pronger in his game yeah. for sure I, I think he's more agile than pronger was pronger is a formidable defensive i think he's more agile in about the same size package would you agree with this open ice hitting and the folks that have done it well over time Tough to teach. You kind of have it or you don't. And I think he's got it. He's got it, yes. He knows that. And it's all about timing. Yeah. And you got to be able to really pick remarkable. because if you miss that hit, you're exposed. Yeah. If you miss the hit, you're going to leave players wide open for scoring chances. But he has that timing yeah. and the ability. Nicholas Cronwell, remember him? Yeah. Mm. In Detroit, he's got some of those traits that Cronwell You want to go even further back in the Detroit lineage? Vladdy Konstantinov. Yeah. I mean, keep Ooh. your head up when you're out there. Yeah. Six feet. 185 pounds, and he would recommend 50 pounds his senior. I like that. McAvoy's another current guy that can yeah. lay the body on an open ice hit on guys crossing at the blue line.